Hi, hello, happy Sabbath, and Shabbat Shalom. Okay, it's not that I didn't do a lot of things this past week, it's just that I ended up doing them at my brother's farm. However, I have been putting together this, this is 16 by 16, a little more than that, like 16 and 3 eighths. I can put a pair of cement blocks in it, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, uh, not that one, but you know, this feature pan, and I'm going to mount a frame up here about that high so that I can uh, make this where it's completely tip proof and it'll have uh, more upright than it is now because I'm going to put that metal roof on it so it's also rainproof. It'll be rainproof and tip proof. And then I'm also going to go ahead and put a pillar in the middle so that it's invasion proof. Otherwise make it where they can't climb up in it like they've been doing. You notice it's made out of bed frames. Well, also, I went around gathering some of the bed frame steel I've been collecting. And, uh, it's not an infinite amount, but it's a decent amount. And I'm continuing to g gather these bed frames from the thrift stores. My goal in doing that is, well, just to, it's good, cheap, affordable steel. It's fairly light steel, and of course it is in prefixed lengths, and it, some of it has rivets and punched out holes. But for a lot of the things I do, it's still pretty good steel. It may not be the ultimate metal for every job out there, but it's a good kind of metal source for a, a lot of these smaller, lighter jobs because they, uh, you know, it's, it's like roughly an eighth or maybe a little smaller of an inch. And, uh, but it's pretty durable, it's pretty rugged, and it's a hardened steel, somewhat, because of the fact that it's actually made out of thinner steel, it has to be a little harder, not super hard, just a little. I do not recall if I mentioned that I've been cleaning up back in here and organizing. It's a work in progress. I had my brother's welder out. It worked for just a few seconds and now it's not feeding. I haven't gotten around to going in there and checking if there's something wrong with the feed loop or not. But for right now, I'm not messing with it. This thing's harder to use than a stick welder for me. Anyhow, uh, got a call from the motor rebuilders. And uh, they said they're done. So I'm going to go Monday and pick that up. And then call Crawford Electric out and have them install that. And because uh, I'm not qualified and my brother doesn't want to risk it because he's not that experienced with it and it's better to have the liability of an expert and with a company that's insured and bonded than to do it yourself and have no, no uh, backup in case you screw up. Well, other than that, it's still it's fairly cool nights, fairly warm days been good warm hay making weather and that's what I've been overdoing is about 77 miles away is repairing hay balers and uh, mowing and raking and stuff and now tomorrow which is the first day of the week uh, Sunday I will be going over and uh, Yahweh willing we'll get it all raked up and bailed up we'll be using a round baler which Unfortunately, it spat a bearing out. We had to go run around town and get a new one. But in the meantime, uh, today is just a really beautiful day. Good day to come out and see the babies and see all the chaos they've caused. Yeah, it's shiny silver. Pop a bear. Shiny silver. Silver is much bigger than the other two, but Papa Bear is kind of a little stronger mentally, a little meaner, a little fiercer. So even though, yeah, and then Jumpy Jeff, Papa Bear pushes Jumpy Jeff all around. Yeah, Papa Bear, here's your baby. See, he bullies little Jumpy Jeff. But uh, 
they're well fed. See how fat their bellies are? That will that will encourage them to grow fast and large. There's a jumpy Jeff. Who's a jumpy Jeff? He's a little bit shy. Uh, unfortunately, his brother Mutt didn't make it, but he's been pretty healthy. He's a jumpy Jeff. Who's a Papa Bear? Papa Bear, he's he's a baby. He's a spoiled brat. You're a spoiled brat. Squishy my head. Squishy, squishy, squishy. Here's a baby. Here's squishy my head. That itches. I need the squitches. Squitches for my itches. Here's the squitches for my itches. Yes. Yes. Okay. So they're doing fairly fine. The most of the flowers that are out right now um, are asters. They'll be out for a little while. They'll carry, of course, things like ragweeds out too, but for the most part, the bulk of the flowers have done their thing for the year, including the waxweed. Very, very, very few sunflowers left up there on that hill. There's a little bit of goldenrod left. A lot of flowers have pretty much finished for the year. There's a couple of these little blue flowers, I don't know what they're called, but a large number of them are uh, done. So in a week or two, they'll all be done. Now the uh, verbenia, there's a couple of those still, but not many, and they're hard to find without crawling through the grass. <sighs> so I'm lazy, and it's a Sabbath, I don't want to work hard. But you see, the wax weeds pretty much all bloomed. The uh, Rose of Sharon has fully bloomed. It's, it's done for the year. And uh, any late, late, late blooming flowers like gentians, apparently if they're going to bloom, they haven't yet. But the one gentian, I think, pretty much died took too much abuse, couldn't survive, I don't know. And of course, my grapes are 99% ripened, or thereabouts, so by the time we get back from the feast, they should uh, be totally ripe, as much as they're gonna get. And of course, by then, some will already have fallen off, so the birds will have eaten some. But when the leaves fall off, then you'll be able to see them all real easy, too. Now, the rain we got has uh, still been giving us plenty of good uh, growth of grass around here, thankfully. So, um, getting in here to review other things that are happening at the same time, it will give us a nice little look of our grass recovery. This all looked barren like where the camera's aimed right now, how it looks just like dirt, like a, practically a desert. But now it looks almost like a lawn because some places got plenty of moisture and they're doing really well. So, and uh, there's six, eight inches of grass in some places. Now, you may not know it, that's Harvey. Henry's down there. Somehow Harvey got from the other field into this field. My best guess is he jumped a short spot over there between the milk room and the greenhouse, climbed up and jumped over the fence by the stairway there. Harvey's in here now, and Henry is still in here. I don't know why Harvey decided to come back over here. I'm certainly not complaining. Here's a Harvey. Here's a Harvey. Uh, after the feast, I will go through the process of trying to figure out the process of deeming either that they legally belong to somebody else or have go through the legal paperwork to have them put in my own name but that's not gonna happen right now so snookums came down through here somebody did and knocked down some fence to the southern edge and then when he or whoever it was that did it went out a total of four of them went out well, the funny thing is Snookums came back in, and the other three are still out. So, Fluffy Puppy here, and Gretel, and Hans 
are all in the wrong field. Up here against the side of the cliff face. And while I suppose they could work their way around if they felt like it, A, they're not smart enough, or B, they don't feel like it. So they've been over here kind of doing the grass is greener on the other side thing. However, I think they may have discovered that while the grass may be greener, so they eat it all up, there's no grain over here. So when I go to feed them at night, they're like, oh no, oh, we're in the wrong place. Yes. Hines, what you doing? Gretel and Puffy Puffy. Mistral Mally, how you doing? Yes, Mistral Mally. How you doing? And then to see Snookums was out with them. But Snookums said, you know what? Go back in. So he came back in. Oh. What you doing? Nice. So there's Mr. O'Malley, Snookums, Harvey, and Henry. All in one place. It's, and you look at how big, height-wise, that Harvey and uh, Snookums are compared to Mr. O'Malley as far as height goes. Mr. O'Malley is shorter. He's got longer horns, and he's actually a bit heavier. But he's uh, not as tall. He's got stubbier legs. I don't know if there's any other differences in them anatomically, though, uh, or genetically. Who's <laughs> Harvey? Who's <laughs> Harvey? Yeah. I guess they like each other better than they like uh, than the other people. They could go through there if they wanted to, but I just don't think they have gotten around to figuring that back out or what. Because all he has to do is get his head under that and they can climb right over. But in the meantime, yeah, Jeff, happy puppy. You're out and you know it, but I ain't worried about it. Because you're not going to go very far. Especially due to the fact you're pretty soon you're going to be both really hungry and really thirsty. You'll have to figure out a way to get in soon. In other words, it's when I tell you, let's go in. You're going to need to get in. I've been bitten by a bug, I don't know what. So, air compressor's down here knocked over, but probably need to do some repair on it. Uh, so, I haven't finished my... I got some bolts over here. I accidentally snapped one off. It wasn't far enough in. I was going to back it out and re-drill it, and it snapped off backing out. So, that's not fun. And uh, so, I'm going to put that oak structure all the way across here and tie it to the tree. And uh, I'll bolt it to all these posts. And the upper beam will be a minimum of three timbers everywhere across it. Now, I may not keep it from being knocked down by falling trees, but hopefully I can get the trees down else, you know, without damaging the fence. That's the hopes, anyway. Um, as you see, the roots on that tree were just fully rotted all the way out, so when it got blown over, there wasn't really anything keeping it standing up, but it's precocious balance in the ground, precarious balance. And when that failed, the storm came, down it went, and here we are. Uh, they've eaten that field off quite a bit, especially due to the fact there were more animals in there than it's really, it's always got more animals than it's really rated for, but and the amount of rain we had hasn't been enough to really build it up quite enough. The only reason this field has been up as high as it was is because of the fact that most everybody else left it and then the boys that are in it are mostly focused on trying to mate rather than eat. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, really not much happening. Uh, next Sabbath is also Day of Atonement, so I won't be making a video then. I might make a report on the Friday before. Um, and then the following week, we'll be gone to Myrtle Beach for the Feast of Tabernacles. So we'll be gone out of town for roughly two weeks. Some critters probably took that out of there. I had burnt that, except I've lost my torch. Don't know where I put my torch. Eh, there's only, I probably should buy another two or three of them just so I have them around. Somewhere I have another one. I'm just not sure where. Anyhow, uh, so 
so no further progress on the well yet. I've got the pump for it, but I can't really work on it until I've got other things caught up first. So, my biggest worry, of course, yes, is that uh, we run out of uh, water whilst away, you know, out of town. However, it's kind of in Yahweh's hands, we trust, you know, if nothing else, that maybe what I should do is fill up a tank of water so that if it's necessary to water everybody that it's here, if the water fails. So I've got those 225 gallon tanks. I could get one, get it up here and fill it up. Then uh, everything would be enough for the two weeks. We'll be gone for 14 days, all told. Travel time, layover time at my brother's house in Tennessee, and all the various things that are going on for the eight days of the feast. In fact, we'll be technically, it, the idea is it'll be two days of travel too, plus layover. Uh, we'll be there 10 days technically, because we'll arrive a day before the event. And then we'll leave the day after the event. So there'll be eight days of the feast in the last eight days. And then there'll be a day beforehand to unpack and a day after to pack. So that'll be our deal. And uh, so got a couple cans of diesel fuel in the back of this thing for mowing with. And my thermos for water while I'm there. Again, I've been using that hay that we mowed and baled here a couple weeks back. and So if everything goes well, we'll get this all knocked out. And the other thing is I'll end up with a few more bales here to put me a little further into the year. So I've been using about one bale per day of hay for my herd at its current size. And that's uh, fairly convenient in itself but it won't last but the number of bales is the number of days then I've got to have more hay from somewhere so we'll try to work it out because there's more fields to mow and bale hopefully and when that happens if that happens then uh, I'll hopefully be able to um, get more hay for the winter you know it's it's tentatively dependent on both the weather and Bubba's machinery holding together. So that's pretty much where we're at. The uh, you know the flowers are pretty much done everywhere. I should go in here and mow this just so that the squirrels can find all the walnuts more easily. I don't know, but uh, I'm not, and there's no real changes downstairs to remark about. I don't know this this fell down the other day. This is from the tornado. It just took a long time to get knocked loose and come down from the tree. But that's why it's theirs. It just came down a day or so ago while we were away. Peach tree looking really good. I got it the second ashing here a while ago and uh, it's getting about done for the year. The leaves are darkening up mostly which shows that the growth is stopping. And it'll probably spend a few weeks or a month or so just absorbing solar radiation and building up energy before it goes dormant for the year. Saves it up for the spring. The lilies grew back despite the deer and the goats and the drought. And so they're back and they're looking nice, but they theoretically won't flower. Uh, the hazelnuts, they're going dormant. Uh, so they'll go dormant till following spring. And then uh, over here, the tomato plant is looking really bad. It will probably end up dying before long. Again, I really need to prune it back some so that only the livelier, healthier vines and pieces are still growing. And again, I did want to transplant these into um pots and stuff this is looking really burned up i don't know what it is if it's disease or water or the zinc or what but i'm going to clean them off here hopefully pretty soon and 
and then uh, but down here it's still growing it's not like it ain't growing it's just growing from the ends of the lower vineage and stuff and the upper vineage is getting devoured or or diseased or something so I need to cut it back that's uh, well I guess the only other thing we can go over here and look I gotta move all these into the greenhouse over here uh, along with that celery plant up on the north side of the building but uh, over here um, and it's going to be a lot tougher this year because they're heavier they're in bigger pots than they were and I've got four confirmed still alive avocado plants and uh, both of the uh, pineapples so that's pretty much the lemongrass died not to mention they say that it wouldn't live anyway because it needs a minimum temperature oh there's one little thing here is uh, I piled up most of my hematite here it's not all of it but just most of it I cleaned it and it's got a really bright mixed color to it and uh, this was the big chunk unfortunately it did break in two while I was cleaning it but I could if I wanted to glue it back together I'm not sure if I will because I don't know how terribly important it is to have a large chunk of super gene hematite I don't know how rare that is to be honest with you I mean I'm not a collector anyhow so the only reason it might be worth anything to me is if it uh, was something I could sell to a collector if they felt that was even worth having and I doubt it anyhow though I've pretty much cleaned out all the dirt and loose stuff so that it's all pure hematite and so um, and then from there all this brown stuff here and the sandy dust is hematite and clay mixed but uh, not enough to really mess with so I'm not gonna bother trying to save that I don't suppose other than that also I've got filters to clean and I got those free tiles to deal with and more railroad spikes to put in my rock ripper collection those odd steel brown uh, iron parts to cast iron parts to put somewhere um, I don't know just things I've got shelves to put in all winter long and stuff like that uh, oh there are a few uh, wax weeds still alive here down this side oh well okay well yeah but most of the flowering's done and uh, things are piling up some things are getting done some things are not getting done I uh, brought the three-wheeler down here to use it to more easily facilitate getting that 800 something pound motor from the truck into the shop and uh, I aired the tires up on it so and then whatever this plant is it's still flowering I don't know if it's a member of the Mullen family or not but it's still flowering it's pretty cool and uh, so that's I can't think of anything else uh, so I'm going to say that's it for today's report. You know, I'll zoom in real quick on those goldenrod right there, just because they're yeah, yeah, they're looking pretty nice, but they're kind of a rarity around here. Most of the goldenrod around here are pretty scruffy. But those are looking nice. Maybe the minerals are right. Okay, that's it until whenever I next make a report. Happy Sabbath, everybody.